Hey, happy Pride Month, y'all! In two weeks, on June 18th, we'll have our fabulous annual Pride special, featuring historical queer figures from centuries ago, a review of a delightful movie called The Gay Deceivers, and a bit of personal history from the fabulous Steve. And while I'm promoting things in the future, our friend Melissa from the Brook Reading Podcast, promo a little later in the episode, has put together a lovely audio play of Midsummer Night's Dream, and will be releasing scenes throughout June. And I, Amelia, made my acting debut in the troupe of Rude Mechanicals. So be sure to follow her so you don't miss my thespian brilliance. But enough about me. This week, we're figuring out who the asshole is. Yes, that's right. This episode is three stories from Am I the Asshole? And our opinions on some really awful people. We love judging. Welcome to Pitney and Amelia's Bitchin' Boutique! We may be awful, but But we're we're right. right! Apparently it's a big thing on Reddit, but it's such a big thing that, like, I read about it on Twitter. I've been finding it, like, there's a site called Percolately, which they actually annoy me because they take, like, a thousand words to get to the goddamn point. You know? Oh, which I've never even heard of that website, but... Out, outside of this shit, I think it's all it's all George Takei's husband's fault because he loves to share shit from Perka lately. Sorry, what, what's his, what's his name? Brad something. Sorry, Brad, but you, you're oh, that's just right. Go, yeah. Just go straight to Reddit. You don't have to post an article. You can you can go straight to the source. They don't have to tell you anyway. But there's this thing called "Am I the asshole?" And Pitney, because he's not on the social meds like I am, he he doesn't usually see this stuff unless I send it to him. And I sent him, well, I sent him one and he's quite fascinated. Yes, because in which it, like, I never see it because I'm never online, ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it's not directly texted to him or directly into his email inbox, he does not see it. Oh, yes. But because he reacted so well to just the idea of this... I decided, well, we'll start with the one that he has seen. I'm going to yes. I'm gonna read the Am I the Asshole post, and then we're going to discuss whether or not who the asshole is. And, and God, do I have an opinion. Of course. <laughs> I can't wait for you to hear the other ones, oh my Lord. Okay, so here's this first one has to do with a dog. And this is the one that Pitney has. Uh, he's, he's seen this one. Me and my husband got married a week ago. Not everything went quite as we planned. The reason is that my brother-in-law, Jack, a 21-year-old male, he's the youngest in the family, extremely well cared for, and everyone spoils him all the time. Sounds like a bitch to me Mm. writing this. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's like you literally just married into this family if you don't like his fucking family. Anyway. (laughs) <laughs> for some reason he doesn't like me well maybe it's because you're a cunt anyway always been passive aggressive towards me and made awful remarks about me on several occasions jack has a german shepherd a really big boy that he adores and takes everywhere i gotta say his dog is very active and quite big my goodness she talks about the bigness of his dog <laughs> quite a bit <laughs> He wanted us to include the dog in the wedding invitation that we sent him. His mom told me that. I told her that he can't bring his dog, and she acted confused, asking why. That seems a little weird. Like, what could... Anyway. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. Then said, Jack and his dog always attend events together, and that Jack didn't appreciate how disrespectful I was towards his dog. 
I have no hate for dogs. I have a chihuahua that I got three years ago. But even she, bless her, cannot be around Jack's moody dog. I'm sure that's her dog's fault, though. I mean, we're talking a German Shepherd and a Chihuahua. It's a Chihuahua. Hello, yes. As someone who has a Chihuahua not two feet from my foot. Yes. It's the Chihuahua's fault. Anyway. I insisted no dogs allowed, and it caused some disagreements, but I thought we had them solved. At the wedding, Jack showed up with his dog and wearing a t-shirt with the words dog dad on it. I was shocked when I saw them. Uh. He sat his dog at the table my family was sitting at. Mother-in-law was smiling widely. That bitch was in on it, I guarantee you. Uh. His dog was (laughs) running around ruining everything, causing... Causing loud noise and making guests uncomfortable. I swear, and I'm not exaggerating, some of my dearest, nearest friends were leaving. Nope. I had enough after all people were feeling terrified, uneasy, with the dogs acting out. I told Jack he needed to take his dog elsewhere so someone else can stay with him. Jack refused and argued with me, so I told him to leave. The mother-in-law kept calling me unreasonable for telling her son to leave. She said I was the one ruining my own wedding and I needed to calm down and let Jack enjoy his brother's wedding. My husband stood there, hands in his pockets, saying he should have eloped if that's how everyone was behaving at the wedding. So, I put my foot down and asked him to leave. He kept arguing with me, but then took his dog and left. The family were were upset, saying I shouldn't have taken away Jack's excitement to share his brother's joy on his big day. His mother was extremely agitated and said I overreacted. That I just made it personal and was acting like a bridezilla acting out on an innocent dog and her son of the wedding. Oh, she can't even fucking write. I already made it clear, but Jack was being mean, trying to go against my wishes, but still I'm the one at the fault. I'm the one at fault for kicking him out instead of figuring out a solution. So ultimately the question is, am I the asshole? Now, I'm going to let you start. But I can guarantee you, one, it's a German Shepherd Mm -hmm. that apparently goes everywhere with this guy. Right. And the mother of the groom wanted the dog there, right? Clearly, clearly. And I bet the husband did too. I bet the groom did too. None of the guests were bothered or upset. And the dog running around his antics, I'm sure he was walking around being friendly. Right. If people got upset, it's because the bride was losing her shit. And there was nothing going on except maybe the dog was walking around being friendly because I know German Shepherds. And a German Shepherd that is going to be that bonded with his owner and that socialized. Because he goes everywhere, right. not going to raise a fuss. And I cannot wait for the divorce. This bitch, this is the kind of shit... That makes me so angry. And it's the kind of shit that makes people talk about like women, you know, bitches be crazy. And it's like this woman made damn sure that her wedding was going to be a goddamn nightmare because she willingly married into a family that she obviously does not like. Yeah. Yeah. But everything's going to be everyone else's fault forever when she actually doesn't have to marry that guy. It's amazing how many people act like they got somehow forced into marrying someone when they could have walked away at any time. And I guarantee you I guarantee you when the divorce happens, that bitch is going to be all about alimony and goddamn child support. I wish I knew where they lived. I wish I knew what state she's going to care about. Ooh, I hate her. And the husband pisses me off, too, because he's just the guy who just stands there and lets shit happen. If he had told her from the beginning, you know what? It's a fucking dog. It's a nice dog. Everyone likes this dog. 
It's not that big a deal. And it's part of the family, obviously. Clearly, clearly part of the family. Now, I'm not going to bring Spike to someone's wedding because Spike is a little asshole. But if but if you brought Joxer to a wedding, it would be perfectly fine. Because he's very sweet and loves everybody and he doesn't cause a problem. And even if he barked a little bit during the ceremony, it would just be cute and everyone would laugh and it would be fine. Yeah, and the fact of the matter, the mother of the groom wanted the dog there. Oh, yeah, because she went out of her way to make sure. It was probably her idea. She probably gave him the shirt that said Dog Dad and said, you should wear this to the wedding. I don't know. I don't know this woman, but I bet her bridesmaids hate her after the wedding. Oh, my God. That's true. She's not even talking about the wedding party. Oh, my God. It caused some disagreements, but I thought we had them solved. Yeah, because she just kept talking and everyone else just was standing behind her back going, But I remember, like, reading that and reading, and I think all the comments were on the bride's side, weren't they? I didn't get very far into it because I, you know... My opinion is my opinion. Oh, the comments were on the bride's side, but that just proves my theory that 90% of everybody online is an asshole. I mean, I, <laughs> I, do, I do get, like, for example, if this was not a dog and it was instead a child, if this was a, it's my party and no children are allowed and you bring a fucking kid, then you're the asshole. I'm not the asshole for saying no kids allowed at my party, but that's different from a dog. Oh, because the dog, the amount of trouble a dog could cause is nothing compared to the amount of trouble a kid could cause. Oh, I would rather have 10 unruly dogs than one child. Oh my God. Because even if the child is extremely well behaved, that kid doesn't want to be there. Uh, But it's still a child and it's still going to make a noise, you know. It's going to have to, you're going to have to have a special plate of chicken nuggets or something because no child is capable of eating grown-up food. Oh, I would rather have dog poop on the dance floor than a child. Child poop on the dance floor. (laughs) Oh, my God. So if I ever get married. (laughs) I'll make a note of that. I think it'll be I understood. want dog poop on the dance floor and no children. <laughs> the following is brought to you courtesy of the No Phony Podcast Network, home of independent awesomeness. Listen, listeners, I get it. I completely understand. How are we expected to find time to absorb all of the content that we love? There's so many movies, TV shows, music, podcasts, TikTok videos, and of course, let's not forget, books. Well, the Brook Reading Podcast can help you with that. Each week on Brook Reading, I deep dive into books across all genres, highlight the author's biography, and any movie or TV adaptations. I also interview new authors, host many special guests, and tie in tons of supplemental information. Five-star reviewers have said, it's like cliff notes for your ears, or it's what school should have been like. The Brook Reading Podcast is a proud member of the No Phony Podcast Network and can be found on any podcatcher. Also, if you go to www.brookreadingpodcast.com, you can find all the information you need right there. Happy reading! Oh my god, yes! This is a fairly short one, and this is one that... Actually, both of the other ones are kind of short, because... because Th- that woman was just a really wordy bitch who needed Oh show. my god, how fabulous, yes. Okay, so <laughs> this one, I have a lot of opinions about. So that's for damn sure. So, I was hanging out with a couple of friends, all mid to late 20s. We had a few drinks at my friend's, my friend Sam's house with his which new Which means girlfriend. they got trashed, which means they got trashed. Oh, well... 
Yeah, I'm not even really sure why she's talking about drinks. Yeah, anything, so go because on. The, anyway. Because the drinks don't come up at all. Okay. Um, at Sam's house with his new girlfriend, Patty, one of their dogs came inside, muddy, and jumped on me. Okay. Patty offered me some extra clothes she had. But Sam, Patty's boyfriend, quietly told her that it may not fit. She's a lot bigger than me, but but she insisted it would fit. All I said was, oh, whatever you have is fine. I really appreciate it. So I got, I got, I put on her sweats, tightened it up, and it was all good. Clearly they were super big, but I made it work and I was really appreciative. But when I came out of the bathroom, Patty pointed and said, see, I told you they would fit. I told her, yeah, everything was great. And then she said again how it fit better than what I was wearing and I was free to borrow clothes whenever. I told her it was a little I'm loose. I'm so confused. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean so to it's interrupt you, but I'm so confused. It's basically, let's say someone's at my house mm-hmm. and something happens and they need to borrow some clothes. So I give them like a pair of pants okay. to change. And my pants are bigger than their pants okay. because I'm bigger than them. But okay. it's just sweatpants. It doesn't matter. The fact that there's this much discussion about whether or not the pants are big or not is it that's that's a problem for me. Oh, okay, okay. So anyway, I just didn't understand. Okay, anyway, go on. Okay, the, it's it's weird that they're talking about this this much. That that is a yeah. Because I, I I thought it was the opposite, but now yeah. I understand. Okay, okay. You know, oh, so so I was free to borrow clothes whenever. I told her it was a little loose, but they were cute. She gave me a dirty look and told me she thought it looked like my size and then looked at Sam. So this is Patty looking at her boyfriend, Sam, because it's their house. Mm -hmm. Sam got uncomfortable and finally said, sure, it was a good fit. I could feel everything weird, so I left early and washed her clothes for her. When I tried to bring it back the following day, she said, sorry, you were too thin for my clothes. In a super sarcastic tone. Oh, what a dumb bitch. Sam said I hurt her feelings and was basically calling her fat. I told him I never did that and just didn't like that they were trying to insinuate that I'm her size when I'm not. I don't think that's wrong when it's a fact and I'm not insulting her, but it felt insulting to me. Am I the asshole? Yes, you are the asshole. Although, oh my God! Yes, you, there's so many nuances of all of that. Oh my she, God! She is definitely the asshole, but I gotta say, Sam, also an asshole, because no one said anything about size until Sam was like, "Oh, I think your pants are gonna be really big on yeah, her." Yeah, and I don't think that the girl wearing wearing the pants that were a size or two big for her. Mm-hmm. would have said anything she would she was just appreciative she unless didn't say a this damn thing. other person had said something first in like a weird way and they obviously did because because the there was the some pants, weird jealousy going on there because you know. patty clearly had a big old ass and Sam liked Patty's big old ass but yeah, and obviously this bitch, loved it so whatever and this bitch was skinny but the but the, it, there is something so fucking weird about sam going you know it was like if i if i tell this this woman oh i have some i have some sweatpants you could put on and my husband leans over to me and goes i don't think they're gonna fit her and the weird thing is it's not like that person is twice my size and they're not going to fit. S- something being a little bit too big. And this is one of those things that, like, women, we don't, okay, women, we don't need men to point out to us which one of us is bigger than the other. <laughs> we know. All right. In fact, and I think men think women are all delusional and weird because in movies and TV shows and stuff, there can be like one pair of pants that is worn by an entire group of friends, even though there's like at least a six inch different in height <laughs> yeah, and they're all clearly not the same size, but somehow, you know, in a movie, if it's, Oh, you have a date and you don't have anything to wear here. Come in my closet and I'll, we'll put clothes on you. It's like, there's, 
it's very, very unusual for two friends to be exactly the same size. Yeah. And maybe that's more common with men. I don't know. But, like, even if they're the same size, they're probably not the same shape, which means the clothes don't fit anyway. I mean, women have a really hard time finding pants that fit. And so even if you get in the same store, the same size, if it's even a slightly different pair of pants, that other one ain't going to fit you. So two women who are not the same size... We instantly know which one of us has a bigger ass. We just know. Oh, yeah. it, and no one needs to say anything. So Sam, shut the fuck up. But the fact that she's in the other room putting on sweatpants and they're clearly having a discussion about whether or not the pants are going to fit her. Because she walks out of the bathroom and Patty goes, see, I told you they'd fit. And Patty, for some reason, is trying to insist See, we're exactly the same size. In fact, my clothes fit you better than your clothes fit you. It's like it's a it's a room filled with assholes. Oh, it's just so weird. Oh my good. I I, you know, and I can say I'm thinking of I'm not gonna say a name, but I'm thinking of a person that we both know and you know who I'm talking about. Okay. Uh-huh. I see the look on your face. You know what what I'm saying, I, right? I, I I don't know. I because I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know who you're talking about until you say that whatever the next thing is. I Dallas don't know in the about. swimming pool. Oh, that bitch. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm thinking of that, and it was like nobody would have even thought of that if you didn't bring that up, because it's not even oh. a thing to have brought that up. It's I'm gonna loan you I'm gonna loan you a pair of sweatpants. Okay, great. And the nice thing about sweatpants is yeah. they're forgiving, which is why we've all been spending a year sitting at home wearing our sweatpants. Because no matter what size you are, your sweatpants fit you. Yeah. I mean that's the nature of sweatpants, yoga pants as well. But yeah, so um, three assholes. This is this might be a record. There's definitely oh my three God. assholes. Yeah, it's in this just mind boggling if you really think about the nuances all of it. <laughs> Oh and they're God. all mid to late twenties, and they're acting like this. They are. They better. They better start acting better. Wow. And stop being such assholes because the rest of their lives are not going to get better. <laughs> and who cares oh about that? Oh my goodness! Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh, and that's and that one other thing. One other quick, quick, quick thing about the whole thing about women. We all know what size we are. We know. I know if my ass is bigger than someone else's ass. I just know that. But women also, we no. Not only does no one need to point it out, it's really kind of a dick thing to do. To go, oh my god, your ass is so much bigger than hers. Oh, or, oh yeah, my god, your ass is totally. way smaller than hers. I mean, no one, yeah. I mean, if there's like a significant height difference, like my two sisters, for example, there's almost like a foot difference in their height. You know, well, not really, but it's it's a lot. So if you know, the short one cannot loan any article of clothing to the tall one. And if they stupidly made a comment like, oh, I, I, I could loan you some sweatpants, everyone in that room would be like, oh, I'd like to see you try. Because that's obvious. But that's not a size issue. That's a she's an Amazon and you're a munchkin. <laughs> you, you're Lilliputian and she towers over you. And yeah, so anyway. Assholes. You know, and that just rem- this reminded me of when we first made our kiss costumes. Uh-huh. That fabulous night where we walked down the drag, and we went into Tower Records in our kiss uh-huh. costumes. Yeah. And I remember, and I mean, our costumes. I mean, we've talked about this numerous times. They're they're worth talking about a lot. But our costumes were the shit. They were the fucking shit. They were the shit, yeah. And it was hundreds and hundreds of dollars and hours and hours of meticulously oh, months, months of accurate work. work. Yes. Do you remember when we went into Tower Records, some asshole that worked there said to me, what happened to your ass, Paul? Because <laughs> I was so skinny. Do you remember that? Yeah, that guy, that guy wished... Wished he looked like that in a unitard. And that unitard. really hurt my feelings because I know I was a scrawny little fuck. Your ass looked fine. 
Your ass looked fine. Well, you know, I mean, I knew that I looked like a popsicle stick, but that really did hurt my feelings. And I know it's opposite and different gender, so I know for me that's not the same But it's still utterly unnecessary to say to anyone. it's not the same impact as it would have on a woman, and I understand that. I'm not even saying that. No, no, no. No, I know. But it's still... That hurt my feelings, so I'm being empathetic you know well and i will say that the first person in that story to say a goddamn thing was the man there were two women and one man and the man is the one who started that shit and the women were just you know they didn't make it any better yeah. but oh my lord and and the fact that the woman telling the story was insulted by the fact that anyone thought her ass was as big as Patty's ass. God damn it. It's like, shut the fuck up. You wish you had Patty's ass. Anyway. Anyway, but yeah, but anyway. Anyway, that just really, really hurt my feelings. <laughs> well, it's it, that just the, the that, idea yeah. that there, there, there is a certain thing. And I, and the reason why I pointed out that the man was the first person to say anything is that men really do think it is their fucking job to comment on any body that walks past them. Oh okay, yeah, no because one the ever woman asks needs to be it. totally hot to their standards, and the man needs to be totally cut that they want to be. Yeah, that's although yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of guys who will depend. It's it's depending on whether they're with their buddies because they will they will say different things to a random woman walking down the street than they would if they were alone. Cause if they were alone, like I'll just, I'll just say the men that would say something to me, if they were with their friends, they might not say something to me because, uh. because there's, you know, there's a lot of men out there who don't believe that there are any men who would be attracted to me. And yet how come every fucking place I go, oh, there's hey. some guy like, Falling over his feet because he can't look away from me for a second. You were always, you've always been a man. Even Gene Simmons noticed you from half he a stadium did. away. He sure fucking did. He did. We had a, we had a uh, nonverbal conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> about, about my attributes. <laughs> <laughs> self-care. You know how Google tells you the things other people are asking? Well, when I looked for information about exercise, it said that people also ask, what exercise can I do if I can't run? And how can I do cardio if I can't walk? You know what I hear all the time from people? I can't exercise because I'm fat. I can't exercise because I can't afford a gym membership. I can't exercise because it's boring. I'm too old. My feet hurt. I don't have time. Okay, first of all, shut up. If you're saying any of that, the real reason you aren't exercising is you'd rather be lazy and complain. If you'd put half the energy you put into making excuses into actual exercise, you'd be a lot healthier and happier. And it doesn't help that we live in a world where we're encouraged to do the most or else we're just wasting our time. What burns the most calories? What is the hardest workout? What exercise will give me a rock-hard six-pack the fastest? Is there a way that I can have a completely different body and become totally healthy forever by working out exactly three times and no more? forget that crap. You know what burns more calories than doing nothing? Doing something. And that's really all you need to know. Now, before I bust apart all those excuses and tell you how to get all that exercise you've been lying to your doctor about, let me tell you this, in case you've forgotten. I am fat. I've been fat pretty much my whole life. Even when I wasn't fat, I was fat. I've been a little fat, and a lot fat. But you know what else I am? I'm a dancer. My fat ass has been in dance classes where strangers 
asked me how much ballet training I've had. Ballet. Me. The fat girl. Because even at 240 pounds, I was floating like a goddamn butterfly. And I can dance for hours because I love it so much. Doing something you enjoy automatically means you'll keep doing it. And over time, you'll build up stamina and endurance and look at you exercising like a badass. Fat fact. Fat folks use more energy doing regular stuff than skinny people do. Even just getting up out of a chair takes more effort, more calories, more strength at 300 pounds than it takes at 120 pounds. So not only does doing something help you more than doing nothing, if doing that something requires a bit of actual effort, that's called exercise, my friend. But it's not blasting my problem areas. It's not burning off that entire birthday cake I just ate. Jeez, you're exhausting. Listen to my fatty, fatty, fat ass. There are people with no legs who don't use I can't walk as an excuse. If you're not going to because you just don't fucking want to, admit it. At least you won't be lying. Okay, here is a real thing you can do if you actually intend to get some exercise. Push-ups. I know, I don't like them either, but you can do them. Start by putting your hands on the wall, standing an arm length away, and lean in. Yep, just like it's the floor. You are removing the incline completely. Lean in, push yourself back. You can do that, right? Okay, do it like 20 times. 30 times, 50 times, whatever you can do. And do it every day until your arms are stronger. Then move the party to the kitchen counter. Same thing, just an increase in incline. When you're stronger, use the seat of a sturdy chair. Eventually, you'll notice that it's not just your arms getting stronger. It's your back and your shoulders, your whole abdomen. Holding your whole body rigid is exercise for your whole body. Interesting, huh? Now apply that idea to exercise in general. Hell, apply it to life. You know it needs to be done, so you do what you can. Stick with it. It gets better. You get better. And just think how nice it'll be to get off the couch without grunting. Yes. So, this is my last one. And this is particularly fascinating to me because we both have absolutely, we, we both totally get what this is about. I didn't think this was a bad thing, but I just like to get an outside perspective in case I'm in the wrong. Anyways, I, 18 female, prefer to thrift my clothes instead of buying new ones just because it's much more affordable. I'm still a broke student in high school and more sustainable. Anyway, it's it's a way for me to buy new clothes without absolutely blowing my wallet. The other day, I was wearing a shirt that I recently thrifted and an acquaintance, let's call her Jen, complimented it and asked where I bought it. When I told Jen that I thrifted it, she proceeded to lecture me on how thrift stores are meant for low-income families and that people like me shouldn't go thrifting because we can afford to pay a higher price for new clothing. Uh. And here's the part. Here's where I might be the asshole. This poor girl is so convinced <laughs> she's the asshole. Can I say I, Jen is a cunt? Can I just say that? Jen is such a cunt. Okay, anyway, go on. <laughs> and, I, and I'm just going to say, she is a white, she is a privileged white cunt. Oh, definitely. fuck that bitch. But here's, here's this poor girl. I come 
from a middle class family in an affluent suburb, so I could technically borrow money from my parents to pay for new clothes. I'm expected to pay for most of my own clothing, which I'm perfectly okay with. I have some money saved up from my last job, but just not a ton. I just want to save my money when shopping for new clothes and also want to avoid buying from brands that use child labor. However, I don't want to take nice clothing away from someone who really needs it. So am I the asshole for going thrifting when I'm not from a low income family? Oh, we fucking know the answer to this one. Oh my God. Okay. Her friend is a stupid bitch. Oh, she's, she's the worst. And this girl is fabulous. Oh my God. You know, she has an amazing sense of style. You know, she's really awesome. Yeah, and she's fabulous, and she needs to get rid of her, you know, Los Angeles Karen friends. And her parents are... I don't even know if she's are... from Los Angeles, but you know what I mean. She probably is. <laughs> Los Angeles is just a concept at this point. Yeah. But also, this girl's parents are good parents because they don't just throw a bunch of money at her so that she can just go buy a bunch of shit they make her she has she's had a job she uses her own money the idea that she said i would have to i could borrow money from my parents to buy my own clothes she was concerned about where the clothes were made right oh hello and sustainability it's like hello i don't know who you are but you can be my friend call me up and she's like she has like legitimate reasons for doing whereas jen is like those clothes are meant for the pores you shouldn't be taking things away from the pores and it's like okay taking buying a shirt is not taking things away from the pores I mean, I, I don't always buy clothes in thrift stores because frankly, it's very rare that there's something that's in my size that isn't fucking hideous. But if I do find something, you better fucking believe I buy it. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So my answer to her is, oh yeah, no, honey, you are so not the asshole. Your friend is a dumb cunt and ditch her. And she, and, and, and the worst thing about, about the stupid friend is that she's, performative in her concern for people whereas the girl telling the story actually behaves like a decent person whereas jen just wants to tell other people what to do yeah and it's funny because to me and probably to you too if you think about it that whole story and that concern is just so stupid and a name and phony and what the fuck but it's also like that kind of stupid shit is important to teenagers yeah the the awful kind of teenagers yeah Yeah, but i mean just even that whole thing of like i i mean it's just so like teenage that would never happen with adults that conversation but And, and really what what's interesting that i really didn't even think about until right now not only is this jen bitch going on and on about those clothes aren't for you. Those clothes are for the poor people. She is, she is literally telling this girl, you need to be going to banana Republic. You need to go to the mall and buy all the expensive clothes because you can. And that's why you have to, you, your family has some money and therefore you have to buy new clothes at the Nordstrom's or whatever you have to, it is your responsibility to the world to wear the fancy clothes that cost a lot of money so that the pores can wear the thrift store. Clothes. Yeah. And it's funny. She's not just saying don't do that. She's saying go buy expensive clothes instead. Oh yeah. You know, fuck that bitch. Fuck that uh, bitch. Jen. 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 <laughs> Jen. It's funny though. I was actually thinking about clothing shopping the other day in that sense, which is really weird. But this is true. Oh, really? You know, because I I, I love, I, I've always loved thrift. You know that. God, yes. And I have stuff, when I when I dress up to go out. Oh, sure. Which is not very often anymore because of the pandemic. 
well, and the fact that I'm here and I have, you don't go like, out anymore. Yeah, yeah. Hello, yeah. I have like no friends, and what am I going to do any, with? You know, yeah, going um, out was a different thing back. But in the day. you know, I would always like, you know, wear stuff that I thought was cute, cool, whatever. Right. And it was largely stuff that I bought at thrift stores and was like weird, funky, vintage stuff, usually. Right, because it wasn't current clothes. It was yeah. like shit from the late 70s or early 80s yeah. at, while it was 1992. Yeah. And it's interesting, when I was thinking about this the other day, you remember when Dad died and I had all that money? Right. Remember, and I put half of it into my retirement and I gave half right. of it to me and I just went fucking nuts for a year. Right. I bought all... You were with me on some of my mall binges. Sure. I bought so many expensive clothes that I never would have bought before that were so cute. Right. But, and I was thinking about this the other day. Okay, remember the... I know you remember these because you talked me into buying them. Those really cute weirdly cut piece together black jeans that totally made me look like I had an ass and I put them on and you were like, Oh my God, you need to buy those. Was this when we were at the Neiman Marcus last call? Store? Maybe. No, because... no, this was in North star mall, the boot mall in San Antonio. It was at a oh. really, really trendy store for like 20 year old black guys. That I had no business oh, shopping wait. in, but I was. And I tried on these jeans and you... Because we everything Leah. in that store, because everything in that store was really cute. And you and Leah were both like, oh my God, you have to buy those jeans. Do you remember right. that? I still wear those. Those were a good buy. Because right. God damn it, they made my ass look good. Because but spending whole... money on a good piece of clothes that you'll wear for the next 10, 15 years is a good investment. But that whole time period... I have all these shirts that I spent forty, fifty, sixty dollars for. I can't wear any of them now because they were so cute at the time. They were trendy. But they're so dated now and it's just like right. I am not gonna be the old fucking queen wearing In these dated trendy shirt. clothes and I, I was right. just like I paid I paid sixty five dollars for this shirt, but I can't fucking wear it. Whereas, like the cool vintage stuff right. that you pay if you pay thirty dollars at a vintage store for a really cool shirt, yeah, you could wear that forever because it's it's you. It was vintage already because it's you, right? But I'm thinking of like there's a couple shirts in particular that I'm thinking of that were just like. Oh my god, these are so cool and so cute and so awesome, but they're so fucking dated. But like in ten years from now, you can pretend you just bought them at a thrift store and they'll feel cute again. <laughs> I don't <laughs> because know. Because they'll like, be I'll old be, enough. What, 63 by then, I don't know, but But it's a shirt. It's But a yeah, shirt. but it'll be vintage then. So yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, so you know, little Miss Vintage Shopper. You rock on and you tell that bitch to fuck off, Jan. Oh my god, in fact, I want I want to find out who she is and I want her to tell us who Jen is. I want I want I want her email address, I want her phone number. I want that I want to I want that girl to be so upset because I will not leave her alone. Because I will not stop telling her what a cunt she is. And I bet she dresses stupid. Oh my god, I bet she's the worst. <laughs> oh, I bet she just... I bet I bet she needs an entirely new wardrobe every six months because she's such a cunt. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone loves stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you!
I want dog poop on the dance floor and no children. <laughs> dog poop on the dance floor may end up being the title. Of this 